Uh, aroha mai everyone, I know I'm in between you and afternoon tea and everything that could have gone wrong then went wrong. Um, uh, tēnā koutou katoa, ko Amy Mills to Kuingawa, no poniki aho. Uh, I am the Head of Funding at New Zealand On Air. I've been in the role only four months now but can speak with a bit of authority on this project and topic area in particular and it's a project very dear to my heart and about three years in the making partnership between New Zealand On Air and TVNZ and at the time that the project was pitched I was actually on the other side I was at TVNZ as the Digital and Children's Commissioner so I wanted to sense check first who do a snapshot of who's, who is actually aware of Hey Hey in the room okay awesome heaps of you great I'm going to play you a little ident of the Iggy's characters and then go into the guts of what I'm going to chat to you about briefly. So, actually, give me this a sec. Can you still hear me all right with just the one? Is that all good? Cool. So what I wanted to chat to you about, I was going to try and truncate about three years into about 10 or 15 minutes, um, and I really wanted to talk you through what the problem was that we were both trying to solve, primarily NZ on Air, but TVNZ was also in the game, talk you through a bit of the how we got there, because I think it was a really complicated, interesting um, difficult to deliver project and there were some key learnings from that and also one of the core reasons that I um, wanted to come and speak to you all today as well is that Hey Hey's got hopefully a really long shelf life in the lives of Kiwi kids uh, and the intention is that we find more and more partnerships to get Hey Hey out into as many places and homes as possible for kids aged five to nine so really keen off the back of this if anyone's in this space trying to reach other parents of that um, age group of kids or those kids directly would really love to have more conversations with people. Uh, and just briefly, um, hoping most of you know the remit of New Zealand On Air, but those who don't, it's a Crown entity. Um, and New Zealand On Air exists to fund public media content, which could sound boring, but it's actually wonderful. And it spans everything from community and access radio and student radio to um, local music to web series to some of the big scripted or factual New Zealand shows you'll see on the big screen, um, everything to the Treasured R R Radio New Zealand, funded through New Zealand On Air. Uh, and everything that we do is around protecting, developing and fostering New Zealand identity. So this space around kids content was particularly dear to our hearts. And the reality was that we were facing a little bit of a crisis point in terms of how Kiwi kids could access their stories. So that was the problem that we were trying to solve is Back in the day, when you had your three major channels, it was really easy to reach New Zealanders, and kids in particular. As the media landscape started to change, as the broadcasters themselves became more commercial, it became harder for kids' content to find a home on free-to-air television. So we were seeing a trend where kids' shows that we'd sort of grown up with that tell our stories, our accents, they were dwindling on free-to-air television and masses of children were going online. And while there was rich and amazing content on the likes of YouTube, and at the point at which New Zealand On Air did some research around this, actually, I don't think Netflix kids had even hit the market in 2015, but there was a sort of mass exodus of kids online, and while there was fantastic content, there was also a lot of not fantastic content. Uh, there was a lot of issues around safety for kids, and it was quite clear that NZ On Air knew that they had to be in the digital space. And, and so that was quite an interesting thing because New Zealand On Air is not really um, too involved in trying to fund platforms because of the complexity of them, the ongoing cost, the money goes towards funding the content. But in this instance, there was a lack from the market of actually delivering a space for kids. And the other really interesting, so there was a whole tranche of research done with Colmar Brunton in 2015, and it was also really clear from the parents that they were saying, we want our kids to hear our stories. It matters enormously. They need to see themselves reflected back at them. Um, and so that's where NZ On Air was like, right, there's a, there's a role here to play, and it's going to have to probably be a digital one because this is the space and this is where these children are. So what could an online home for local children's content look like and who would we work with to deliver it? 
And so there was a real, there was quite a long process which I wasn't involved in because I was on the other side of the TVNZ end at that time. But there was a, um, a discussion paper went, that went out, stakeholders were asked to submit responses to that. Feedback was collated and then articulated back um, and a draft paper went out and then a call out or a request for proposals went out to the market and that's where TVNZ came in the mix and you're going to have to ignore all this stuff because I think this is the old keynote formatting. Um, well, and where, where there were some sort of deal breakers were things like had to be no advertising on the platform given this group of children, had to be free access, that's NZ on Air's um, remit, so all New Zealanders have to be able to access the content that public funding's going towards, had to be a joined up media sector because it felt like this is a space, especially when it's non-commercial, that wasn't going to be competitive, so what could that look like? Co-investment always makes public money go further, so that's a real key piece. And at the centre of all of it, and probably one of my biggest learnings was you always have the child front and centre when you're trying to build a product for them, especially at that primary school age and older. Can't be kind of led by the needs around education. That has to be an underpinning in it, but kids have to feel like it's by and for them. So then TVNZ won the competitive pitch, and there are a few reasons for that, and um, a long legacy of TVNZ also delivering in the children's media space, but also a really solid infrastructure that came with TVNZ around how this digital platform was going to be delivered and how that would be done, which is a whole other probably hour-long presentation. And then once the project kicked off, we worked really closely with stakeholders, and actually there's um, some it's quite a um, powerful document that's up on our website around the child-centred principles. We did a charter, basically, around what this had to do and be for children, and this kind of summarises where that space was, that we knew how critical stories are for their development of imagination. We knew how important it was for them to see themselves reflected back at them, and that that would then in turn foster a sense of their own belonging in New Zealand and what that looked like. So that was a sort of underpinning... We then went out and did a bit further research because the Colmar Brunton research had looked at children aged 6 to 14. And so once the project kicked off, we went and did a regroup and went back to those audiences to better understand them. And this slide is essentially um, showing you why we ended up focusing on 5 to 9 for Hey Hey in the end, because to a degree, and it sounds cynical to say it, but it felt like we'd lost 10 plus, that their kind of autonomy and agency, they were deciding what they wanted to watch parents, the caregivers, they had a lesser degree of involvement around what the kids were watching and so we felt like in order to get the best bang for buck, in order to launch a platform and an online home for kids content, we probably had to focus in that five to nine age range at the beginning. And the other interesting thing that came out of the research was the split down the middle of parents' behaviour almost of media comfortable and then media wary parents. And the media comfortable parents were I want my kids to have as much content as possible that they can devour. There's a lot of babysitting going on with the devices. There was a little bit of cultural cringe factor, you know, like, I don't think New Zealand content's actually that great. I'm not all that into it. I don't, my kids want kind of glossy international stuff. Whereas the media weary parents were, I really care if my kids are getting local content. I care if the platform's safe, is it safe? And so we knew that when we launched the platform that those were the parents we were gonna be talking to, but we also needed to make sure we were appeal appealing to the other side, which is why you'll see on Hey Hey, there's a mix of international titles as well as local, but it's about 85% local. And then for us, it was incredibly important as well to reflect our biculturalism, and we did a ton of work with the amazing Stacey Morrison and her husband, Scotty, to develop a content po, content framework that then went out to the production community, so all the amazing creators and storytellers. And again, it's quite a dense text slide, but this is all up on our website under the Hey Hey section. But it, it said to the production community, this is the content that needs to reach our children, and this is why. And so when we have our funding rounds as NZ on Air, we want to see content come in for Hey Hey that ladders out of all this thinking. So we were trying to be really clear with the makers and creators what we needed from them. And then this was the kind of the, the promise and this was pinned up on all our walls and it dictated everything that we did really. It was saying the platform's going to have to tell engaging, high quality local stories and it has to be good for children. It has to feel positive um, and impact their lives in a good way. And of course it has to be digital. So tech, games, how we worked with that was all about trying to inspire kids' imaginations. And then NZ on Air had in 2017 the first funding round for children 
knowing that Hey Hey was going to be a platform and invested around $10 million in kids' content. And this is a snapshot of the, we've just gone through this second year's round, um, but this was a snapshot of the work we were trying to do to look at, right, what's the spread across that age range? How do we deliver to both? How do we deliver to an interactive offering? And what's that going to look like on this platform? And then how do we get a spread of genres and formats of content? So live action, animation, comedy. Um, so that sort of gives you an idea of what we were juggling. And then this is the hero teaser campaign that TVNZ's marketing team made to launch the platform in late May. Kia ora. welcome to Hey Hey. New Zealand on air and TVNZ have made a cool new free app for curious tamariki like me. Here at Hey Hey, us kids can watch awesome local shows like Zemu. And Kai 5. Ooh, thanks! Barefoot Bandits! Ooh, can I have some? Sure, catch! And My the Brave. Plus some of the best shows from around the world. Music, stories, competitions and games. Watch and play on Hey Hey! hey. I love those eggies. So it's a website, interface looks very similar to Netflix and that was a, a big learning for us when we were doing all of the intricate kind of user journey wireframe mapping was keep it simple and kids are so used to this interface now that actually it did the job of familiarising themselves and it almost did that thing of like, oh it feels the same as that type of product so I get it and it's for me and it's not trying to be anything different. And the minute we tried to go anywhere more um, interactive um, we realised it aged it really distinctly so you couldn't deliver to sort of five year olds in that interactive space in a way that nine-year-olds would also appreciate it. So it had to be that the interface remained really simple and then the content could speak for itself and, and feel personalised for the age range of kids. And it's also a smartphone app and it's a tablet app for iOS and Android. And we're hoping to launch Chromecast this month, or no, December, so that's on the way as well. And there's four core, well, three core content categories, which are the videos of very differing durations, which you'll see. Um, games, and games comes in the form of embedded web games in the platform, but also links out to the app store where native New Zealand game apps can live. So there's a parental gate lock that will pop up so that if kids are younger, they won't dive into the app store, but the older kids who, uh, in theory, would be allowed access can get through. And then there's a sound audio stories section that also has music in it. And on the website, there's competitions as well. And this is actually the first time I think we have been able to um, present and have some results to share as well, which is quite exciting. So it launched in late May. I think it was the last week of May it launched. So it's been around for nigh on six months, almost seven months. And when we were mapping what targets looked like, it was really difficult because there wasn't really anything to benchmark it within the space in New Zealand for this audience group. So we looked at the um, sort of the scope of where we could go, and there's 250,000 homes in New Zealand with kids five to nine. So as a team, we sort of looked at that and said, right, conservatively, if we can hit 10% of that in terms of unique users in the first um, year of launch, we're probably doing okay and we can build from that base. So we were looking for 25,000 unique users, so that included downloads and then unique visits to the website. Um, and we've smashed that target. So conservatively, we've had 70,000 app downloads across the different endpoints, um, and they're all, so they're arguably unique. There'll be a little bit of crossover where you might have households where you've got people visiting the website and downloading the apps, but you, we've still managed to well outdo our target, and you've got 95,000 unique web users. We've hit over three quarters of a million video views since launch, and sessions are climbing as well. Um, which has just really been this wonderful kind of sense of relief of like the audience is there, the product still needs to be enhanced and developed, but it's definitely found its target audience. And then the other thing that we were very clear on was we're never going to um, out Netflix, Netflix, or out YouTube, YouTube, but if we could be driving weekly usage of the platform, and the idea being weekend usage and ideally co-family viewing experiences, then that was the space we felt we could meaningfully play in with the volume of content that we could um, feasibly generate and create. So we're getting about 13,000 weekly users coming in who are coming in just over one and a half times a week. The session duration is really um, healthy at 31 minutes, so we're thinking games is driving a lot of that. SKU's iOS. 
And that tranche in the middle there, you probably won't be able to read that, but that pink line is tablet. And so what it shows you on the left, web is blue and um, smartphone is orange at the top. So it shows you more people are coming into the website. We think some of that might have been driven around launch. But you're actually getting sessions as the middle column and durations on the right-hand side. You're getting um, longer sessions on tablet and more sessions coming in regularly on tablet. And I think we sort of knew that. That was the hunch that tablet was going to be the golden device that kids would love and it really is. And then below here, you've got just um, demonstrating that where the greens are is Saturday, Sunday. So that's the highest visitation coming in throughout the week, followed by Friday and Monday. So it really is delivering on that weekend proposition that we'd hoped for. And the other thing that was a real relief to us was that it spread across the region. So while you're getting higher numbers of users in the main urban centres, Wellington, Christchurch, Auckland, because of the population side, in terms of per population, sort of per capita, um, you're actually seeing higher usage in places like Whangarei and Tauranga, which is really, that was another piece that was really important to us, that it couldn't just feel like it was city centre usage, we wanted it to get out across the regions. And just because it was such a long process and there was so much to share, I've just distilled it down into a couple of things, but really important for us was local content is king, that realisation, and on the left there we've got the top ten shows on the platform and the seven in blue are all local. Uh, it used to be the top five, but Peppa Pig nudged up in the last quarter. I was really gutted. Um, but I think that was something that we had. We weren't sure that was going to be the case. And there's a lot of content on there like Transformers and things, and we thought that might outdo the local stuff, and it absolutely hasn't. Fanimals being one of the biggest drivers of traffic on the site, and we can absolutely put hand on heart and say that's because Fanimals is a television property as well as a digital property. So it's on weekdays on TVNZ2 for kids in the afternoon, and every episode pushes to hey, hey. So we're seeing phenomenal traffic driving from TV to digital, which again was a big learning for us. We weren't sure that was going to be the case and does demonstrate still, even though it's in decline, how powerful television is in terms of how much it reaches out across New Zealand. And this uh, very grainy photograph, this was sent to me by my um, old boss at TVNZ of Hey Hey being discovered by her kids for the first time, all clustered around the device. And I just love that photo. And it did that, it demonstrated to us that need, which we had been doing throughout the sort of two years of, of project build was put the kids first and foremost. You're always having to make massive compromises when you're launching a, a digital platform. But every decision we made that felt like a really critical one, how do we have the videos playing, how does this work, we made sure that we were going to the to kids first and foremost to, to sense check what their experience of that was and what they needed. And it seems so obvious to say, I actually heard in the last presentation before I was coming in, I think was someone saying exactly this around the difficulties of projects and how critical it is for communication to be effective and transparent and this slide was to demonstrate the layers of governance and oversight so the project team build that was blood, blood sweat and tears to get it done but all the way up to the top we had an oversight team so when we had to make big calls about how things might work or if we had to nick something you had a really top tier level with an external chair who was sense checking that and then they had the they knew what we were trying to ladder towards so they had that ability to look look down and say, are we going to compromise anything that we've said here as a fundamental from the outset of the project? And then when it came to things like the content curation and the approach towards content, it felt really important to be working with the wider industry and the um, Children's Screen Trust in particular. So there was a lot of layers there, and things like Slack became completely critical to getting anything done, um, and there was a lot of communication, probably over-communication. Just because I know you'll be hungry, this was just the last slide to say, oh, there's a couple of idents of the eggies quickly, but this was just to say that we worked with some wonderful partners throughout. Um, people like Māori Television, we've actually worked to have a whole stream of their children's content, Tamariki Ha, sitting within Hey Hey. We're hoping to do something similar with RNZ around what their children's content offering is. Um, and then the likes of Health Promotion Agency were actually working with us to sort of do matched funding of content that delivered to the needs of um, HP. So there's a show, Kai 5, on the Hey Hey platform all about teaching kids how to cook and eat well, and that ladders out of the core goals that the HPA had at the time, so they could come in and say, we would like to contribute towards that content being made. And Auckland Live were in early talks with, because they're about to put an enormous screen up in Aotea Square, it might already be up, and want to do some um, dedicated Hey Hey curation and channel promotion through that um, platform. 
So we're really keen to find partners, and I think the next step in growth for Hey Hey will be how we work with other partners to get it out into the world, and how our platform can be used by others to reach that audience. So I'll just end on two little idents for you, of the eggies. This is my favourite. That's all.